Welcome back to my channel, YouTube. Listen, if you're new here, my name is Brandon. I'm an executive chef here in Silicon Valley, and I love to create content. It's a little passion project of mine, and I don't wanna waste your time, so we're gonna jump right in. I want to do a copycat version of the McRib. It's out, it's on and popping right now, and I think a lot of people are intimidated by making it at the house. I can curate a recipe that you can do at your house that will be so much better than going to McDonald's, trust me. Don't forget, hit that subscribe button, all right? And always turn on the post notifications so you get alerted when I post another video. And we're gonna jump right in. So I'm gonna start with the bad news, okay? We got some bad news here for everybody out there. And I saw all these copycat recipes. I hate to say it, but you know, it's not actually barbecue rib. All of these people cooking the ribs, you know, fall off the bone and then putting it between a sandwich, taking out the bone. I hate to say it, but I didn't want to go that route. And let me tell you why. I think you could get a similar product by grinding your own pork using the shoulder or the leg and then making kind of like a sausage mixed, but that's a little bit more combined with seasonings. And if you notice, that's what they use at McDonald's. Who knows what they're putting in their mix, but they make a little pot patty, a little rectangle patty that kind of looks like a set of boneless ribs. I think it's a good way to get more flavor into the sandwich, which I believe that is gonna be a yield a better product. And also we're gonna make the barbecue sauce and also the bread. And I wanna show you how easy it is to make these things at the house. It's super easy. A couple ingredients, pop it in the oven, you're good to go. So without further ado, let's get into this. Okay, a little pro tip. In all honesty, if you're a new home cook, I think it's really important. Go through the process of measuring your things out so you have everything you need at your fingertips. Then as you start to build confidence and you're able to handle a large amount of work, then you can freestyle it. But a good example is like when I prep a YouTube video, I always have my stuff organized. If you can see right here, you know, everything down to the yeast, Everything I need is ready to go. I think it's really important. It's called mise en place. Everything in its place. That way, there's no mistakes. So I think that's really important. Please get your mise en place together. So we're gonna get into making the bread first. It's super easy. You're gonna grab milk, one cup. You wanna warm this to about 100 degrees. Get a thermometer, take the temperature, okay? Right now, this is at 102 degrees. It's perfect. You could also uh, use instant yeast. All I have is dry active, so that's what we're gonna use. Okay, one tablespoon of dry active. Stir this around. This is gonna take about five, maybe six minutes to get active. But what I like to do is I like to cheat a little bit. So take a little bit of the sugar from the recipe and just feed it just to get the process going. And we're gonna come back to this. Okay, so now our yeast is nice and bubbly. This is a really simple recipe. All we're gonna do is we're gonna add the flour. So this is about three cups of all purpose flour to start. And then we will add as needed. I'm adding a teaspoon of salt, two tablespoons of sugar, Add one egg, okay? And then you're gonna use your dough hook. And here's the thing, you don't have to use a mixer, it just makes life a lot easier if you have one. If not, just use a little elbow grease. There you go. Once your dough starts to come together, you're gonna add three tablespoons of soft butter. Yeah, keep mixing. So we're back in the game and to tell how this dough is done, so we're not looking for 100% window see-through. What you're looking for is that the gluten is all the way developed. Now that could take six to eight minutes. Normally you have to touch and feel. If the dough has been worked too much, what I do is I let it rest for like two minutes and then go right back into mixing. If it gets really, really soft, you're ready to go. Okay, so if you did this right, you shouldn't need any flour, you shouldn't need any moisture. It should be nice and soft. What you wanna do is get it into a taut ball. And what I like to do is just knead it together here. Shouldn't take long at all. And what we're gonna do is we are gonna let this rest and we're gonna put it in a, a warm environment. So you want it to be like 90, 90 degrees and we're gonna let it double in size. Use a little bit of spray, Pam spray, and put it into a bowl. Plop this down. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna cover this. And then I have, I actually have a proof setting on my oven, which is what I'm gonna use. But then we're gonna let this double in size. Should take about, you know, uh, anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour and 15 minutes. Okay, now we're gonna get into making the McRib. Basically what we're gonna do here is I have 2.2 pounds of pork shoulder that has been diced. 
What I wanna do is I wanna ground it myself. You could alternatively buy the pork ground, but I highly recommend getting one piece of pork and grounding it yourself. It's so much more worth it. I'm gonna show you how I go through the process. So anyway, we're gonna start with one tablespoon of salt, half tablespoon of garlic powder, half tablespoon onion powder, one teaspoon of paprika. This is just regular old paprika. Muy importante, we're gonna go with one teaspoon of dried thyme, okay? One tablespoon of brown sugar. And then what we're gonna wanna do is give this a good mix. Perfect. I had this in my freezer for about 30 minutes before I started working with it. I wanna make sure it's absolutely cold. Then next, what you're gonna do is you're going to hit it with some ground pepper. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this back in the freezer before I grind it, okay? You want everything super cold. Okay, so we have our grinder station set up. We're gonna add one more thing that I had in the freezer and that is seven ounces of chopped bacon. I think adding a few slices or a couple slices of smoked bacon will not only bring fat to, more fat to the party, but it'll also bring flavor and smokiness. So keep that in mind and let's do this. One of my biggest tips as a chef, anytime you make a uh, mixed meat, always taste your mix. Taste a small amount of the mix before you commit to doing whatever you're doing. Taste a little bit, put it in a saute pan, cook it, and just taste it for seasoning. Next step, what we're gonna do is we are going to add about a cup and a half of breadcrumbs to a mixing bowl. Now, if you have stale leftover white bread, that's great. Use that and then add one and a half cups of chicken stock. Obviously pork stock would be ideal, but I'm trying to make this user friendly. So chicken stock, and then what you wanna do is mix this around and we're gonna let this hydrate. Okay, that's to the side. Then what you're gonna do is clean your KitchenAid bowl and put your pork mixture back in. When I tasted the mixture, what I realized is I thought it tasted too much like a sausage and the grind is too chunky. I want to keep that texture of the chunkiness, but what we need to do is dial it back a little bit, right? So there's two ways you can go about it. You can either use a food processor or you can do what I'm doing right now. And that is making obviously the mixture of slurry, basically bread and chicken stock. And then what we're going to do is we're going to emulsify this sausage. So here we go. I'm looking for a nice consistent product. I'm gonna go ahead and go with all of this. Then we're gonna add two eggs. Make sure you don't get any shells in there. So now we have a mixture like this, right? It's kind of wet, sort of wet. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna taste this now. I really wanna mimic that same texture that we all love with the McRib. I'm gonna taste a piece of this and then we're gonna go from there. Okay, so I, like I said before, I think what's really important is always taste your mix. Oh my God. Dude, we're there. The seasoning is perfect. It's smoky. The texture is really nice. You see how it's all together. It's juicy. And with the chicken broth addition with the breadcrumbs, it's a game changer. It completely changes the texture. Paddling it re uh, emulsifies the meat to make it all one. I'm glad we made that change. Now let's get into molding. Let's do this. And what I wanna do is slam about half of this down. I would like to spread it out. When I think about a McRib, I really think about those three indents, right? I feel like it'd be the best to really um, flatten it out like this and then cut the rectangles and then slide it onto a pan, right? I mean, this is the way I think would be the most efficient. Anyway, here we go. Hear me out now, okay? It's gonna shrink up, so let's account for half. Let me see if I can. Oh yeah, we can get away with that. Yeah. Come on, this is genius. Who would have thought of this? Then we get rid of all this. And then I think if I just Let's go around. 
Buns are proofing, our meat is in the freezer, and what we're gonna do now is we're gonna cut the pickles. So I'm using kosher dill, and I like my pickles a little bit thicker than usual, just because I really like that crunch. And make sure you take your time, cut them nice, okay? Look at this, all perfect. See that? Beautiful, let's go. Okay, next, for the McRib, we need an onion. I got the white onion, I think that's very important. Cut off the bottom. We'll only need one half, so we'll save the rest. And I'm gonna peel it like this. If you don't have one of these, I highly recommend getting one. This is a Japanese mandolin, totally worth it, okay? Trust me. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut really thin slices, just like this. And then all you're gonna do is you're gonna put these in ice water. We wanna get them real nice and crispy. Set that aside. Okay, so basically the whole idea behind this was wait until they're semi-frozen and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna break it right here. And as you can see, you have your McRib portion. Breaks right off. Perfect McRib portion. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna break these pieces apart. Always remove the plastic. It's just so much easier to work with. One, and I mean, obviously, I still have some pork left, so this will make a ton of portions. Beautiful. I'm gonna go ahead and put these in the fridge now that they're portioned out. Now that our hoagie rolls have doubled in size, we are going to go ahead and brush them with a little bit of water. And I'm just doing this to make sure that some of the cornmeal sticks. If your dough is sticky, then you can omit this part. Not only will this help with the bite of the bread, but it'll also help with the any type of toppings that you're gonna put on. So this is an heirloom cornmeal that I'm using. Just sprinkle it over ever so gently. You can use whatever you want. You could use sesame, you can use everything bagel seasoning. The world is your oyster. We're gonna go ahead and score one right down the middle. Four hundred degree oven for about uh, twenty minutes. So today we're focusing on the actual McRib and the bun. But I did whip up this barbecue sauce real quick. Now get a pen because I'm gonna write this down. It's super easy. One cup of brown sugar, one cup of ketchup, three tablespoons of molasses, quarter cup of apple cider vinegar, a tablespoon of garlic powder, one tablespoon of smoked paprika one teaspoon of cayenne pepper, one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, two tablespoons of kosher salt, and one tablespoon of black pepper. You're gonna put all of that into a pot and then bring it up to a simmer, cook for about five minutes, and then pour into a container and reserve for later. All right, let's go. Oh, look at these. Beautiful, nice and soft. I'll tell you what, if you could smell this right now, it's amazing. Now we're gonna let these cool down to room temperature. Barbecue sauce. Here we go, the assembly. We're gonna cut off the ends a little bit, just so it doesn't look so crazy short. A few pickles. Homemade McRib sandwich. Let's see how this thing tastes. This took four hours to make. Literally, I bit off more than I could chew, but now it's time to try it. Okay. Mm. This is so much better. This is amazing. I'll leave the recipe down below. You have to check it out. I think I would make the bread maybe a, a day before, you know, wrap it up in plastic and let it sit for two days to get really soft. But this is great, man. This is so worth it. Delicious, look, I'm eating the whole thing and it's freaking midnight. Anyway, I hope you like this video. Make sure to smash that thumbs up button and I'll see y'all next time. Let's go.